So we will now briefly look at the <coughs> actual charts of the classification. Now this is only by way of introduction to what is there in the Ashtanga Hridaya and how it can help us to apply the principles of Ayurveda in our own times. So if you see here, you can see the food Ahara Dravya charts classified into the Drava Dravya, which means the liquids, and the Anna Dravya, which means the solids. We don't need to really worry about all the names and the details here. This is just to give a schematic representation of the very comprehensive classification that you see in these textbooks. So if you look at the liquids, we have Toya means water, Chira means milk, Ikshu means sugar cane, Madhu means honey, Taila means, uh, you know, the uh, oils, and uh, then Madhya means the alcohol, and Mutra means urine. So <clears throat> this is very interesting that uh, if you look at this classification, water is the input and mutra is the output, the urine is the output of the liquids that are, you know, ingested. So, from water to urine gives the spectrum of the gunas, water being very shita snigta, milk being the next grade or level of shita snigta guna, and then you know, Ikshu, which is the sugar cane and its products. And then Madhu is the honey and uh, Taila is Ushnasnigda. So we can see that when it comes to Madhu, it becomes slightly Shita Ruksha. And then it moves on to Ushnasnigda. And then Madhya is extremely Ushnasnigda, and then the urine is ultimately the output of all these liquids that come out of the body. So, in order to really understand the classification, we need to really understand the gunas. So, in a similar way, the solid foods are also described with the ones having the most food properties beginning with the cereals and then ending with spices and condiments, which are on the other end of the spectrum, you know, at the dividing line between what is food and what is medicine. So this slide here, again, it's a very busy slide, but, and the names can be a bit uh, kind of uh, unsettling and uh, we needn't worry about it. This is just to illustrate that there is a scheme for classification. So, in the next few slides, we'll have an illustrated look at how Ayurveda classifies foods. You know, this meticulous classification is extremely important for us to be able to uh, choose the right kind of foods in the right context. So, here we have we can see the classification of the liquids, so beginning with water and milk and then the sugar cane products. So the sugar cane products are included in the liquids because they are all derived from sugar cane juice. So even though there are some solids involved here, they are ultimately included in the liquid foods because of the source is a liquid. Similarly, milk, so milk by itself is liquid, but many of the products that are derived from milk are solids, but they are also included in the section. And then we have honey. So if you look at these four categories, water is very Shita Snigta, which means cold and unctuous, and chira or milk is even more cool and unctuous. But when it comes to sugar cane, the unctuousness reduces, it becomes less snigda. So, chida snigda, chida snigda plus, 
then Sita Snigdha minus and when we come to honey, it's almost Sita Ruksha. And then Taila with gingerly oil, it begins with gingerly oil. Most of the Tailas or oils are Ushna and Snigdha, so they're not Sita and Snigdha. And Madhya is Ushna and Ruksha. And urine, of course, is Ushna and Ruksha. So it is the uh, urine represents the liquid substances that are eliminated from the body, which means urine represents the one extreme of what is not suitable and water the most suitable because all living activities of the body, the functions, happen in a watery medium. And now if we were to look at the classification of water, this is quite fascinating that water is also classified in different ways and their properties are mentioned. So at, the po at this point of time it's just important to explain that pure atmospheric water is distinguished from water that has contacted the atmosphere as well as the ground. So it's a principle in Ayurveda that water, the properties of water is, ex is modified based on, you know, the, the place where it is found, so where it is stored. So groundwater itself changes its properties based on whether it is sea or a river or a well or a tank uh, and these implications are extremely important uh, when we consider the impact on health. So the other thing is that water has also been classified based on heating hot water, cold water, iced water so all these interesting descriptions can be found. So using these principles, we can also classify liquids that are not mentioned in the texts uh, within this framework. So if we want to classify them, we need to first understand their gunas. And once we understand the gunas, we can classify them within the scheme. Now if you look at milk, again cow's milk is uh, recommended the most because it's closest to the human requirements and then we also have other types of milks described like camel's milk, uh, buffalo's milk, you know milk of animals like deers and uh, sheep and elephant and also goat. So goat's milk compared to cow's milk has more medicinal use whereas cow's milk has more nutritional use. Uh, so you can see that after the milk products are listed, milk is listed next, the milk products are listed. So even though these are actually solids, since they are derived from milk, they are included in the section. So we have ghee, buttermilk, you know, the liquid uh, portion of yogurt which is removed to make solid yogurt and then butter, curds which is uh, in the west known as yogurt and then various other cheese and other things that are you know derived from milk are described and their properties. So although they all come from the same source their properties vary. We also have uh, descriptions about sugar cane, different types of sugar canes. So this is really very interesting. A lot of varieties have been described. And then what we can derive from them, of course, the sugar and the jaggery. So these are also solids, but they are described in the category of liquids because they derive from sugar cane juice. And most of the time we dissolve sugar in a liquid to use it so that's the reason why they are considered here and then we have the oils different types of oil seeds the most foremost amongst which is tilataila which is ushna and snigdha and sashrapataila is the strongest which is mustard oil mustard oil is ushna and ruksha and as we move from one taila to the other you know, again, you can see the, the gradation 
the ones which are milder in heat are listed first and the oils which are very ushna more ushna are listed last so amongst the oils tila thaila is the most suitable for the body which is the sesame oil and then we have the different types of alcohols you know all alcohols are considered as uh, uh ushna and ruksha and therefore because they are opposite to the quality of ojas so this is the key thing that in ayurveda we have classified the foods based on the impact that they made made on the dhatus and ojas so madhya or alcohol is mentioned towards the end because it is one substance which has almost exactly the qualities which is opposite to ojas so if you drink alcohol too much we will lose our ojas which is the biggest problem that ayurveda uh points out as unfavorable with respect to alcohol and again it's important that all alcohols are not the same so there are some which are comparatively safer so all these categories are described and their properties elaborated so we also have uh, uh other categories classification after alcohol comes the urine so urine although it's used in medicine for some specific purposes they are generally considered incompatible in ayurveda we really do not have descriptions on the use of human urine for health purposes but cow's urine and goat's urine were commonly used and is an ingredient of many of the ayurvedic formulations so this is a brief idea which gives us an understanding of how actually ayurveda classifies food substances the liquids and now if you look at the solids we have the cereals the pulses the cereals are the sources are sources of carbohydrates so these are the energy foods and then the pulses are the sources of proteins so these are the foods for our structure of the body and in ayurvedic diet there's usually a combination of a cereal and the pulse and then we have the category of cooked foods which are done by various combinations and recipes and then we have the mamsa varga which is meat so ayurveda is not really fully vegetarian it in, allows the use of meat uh for the purposes of nourishment and support of the body and then we have elaborate descriptions on vegetables and fruits and also the spices and condiments so this is how solid foods are classified and to look at an example if you just look at the cereals you know there are descriptions of different types of rices so rice itself varies in property so it's just that we, it's not that we just have one type of rice the different types of rices and all these rices have different properties so this is the overall uh you know approach to classification of foods and what we have discussed today is only a brief introduction a glimpse of what ayurveda has to offer when it comes to knowledge regarding classification of foods and choosing balanced diet